Hey, what's up guys? It's Ryan and welcome to week number 56 of the top five Skyrim mods of the week. Now, hopefully you guys will enjoy the mods that I've picked out for this week. Starting off at our number five spot, we have Font Replacer, Edui. I'm pretty sure Edui is how you pronounce this. Uh, I could be wrong though. And uh, basically what it does is very simple. It just changes the font of all the menus and all the different interactions that you can do in Skyrim. All the subtitles, all the different menus, and whenever you press start and you look under your quest, all that will be a uh, different font as well. And I've actually haven't covered a lot of these because I think that there's such minor changes that they don't really add much into the game. But this one and a lot of the other ones that I've been looking into, I I've actually got a few requests to actually look into some font replacers and some UI fixes and stuff like that and uh, it actually changes the way that the game feels. It makes the game feel a lot different and it has a different type of approach to the game and it can make the game feel a lot more immersive because I feel like that the text that's in the vanilla game doesn't look, it looks more modern than it would back how this game takes place. The font Edui, you know, kind of looks more, you know, old timey font and I think that looks really cool and that's why it comes in at a number five spot so I'd recommend giving it a try. Coming in at our number 4 spot, we have another simple mod called Multiple Rings. Now, this mod, basically all it does is, as it says in the title, it allows you to wear multiple rings at once. I believe you can wear up to 4 rings now, so if you go to the enchantment table and you make some rings, you'll be able to put 4 on. I'm pretty sure 4 is the max. I was only able to put 4 on, but I also had a lot of duplicates of the same ring, so that could have been why. Uh, but it allowed me to put four on and have four different enchantments on at the same time, which I think is really cool. And uh, I also liked how in Oblivion you were actually able to have two rings on. In Skyrim, for some reason, you're only allowed to have one, and I never really understood that. I always thought it should e either be two or like four or, you know, either go all of the fingers and do all ten or all, you know, do eight on all your main fingers. I thought that would be really awesome and have all those in different enchantments. But uh, yeah, this one allows you to have four or more. All the enchantments will stack, so if you're a good mage and you're able to actually have some powerful enchantments behind you, the enchantment table, then you can go there, create some rings, get some more powerful enchantments, and make your character even more powerful. So that's definitely why it comes in at our number four spot, so I'd recommend giving it a try. Coming in at our number three spot, we have a house mod called Hermit's Stump. Now, it's a very small Marwind-like house. Hermit's Stump is located in the Marvelous Hermit's Cave near the Hillgrun's Tomb. It's on the way to Iverstead. And there's also a map marker that's really big and it appears on your map, so you'll definitely be able to find it. Uh, some of its features, it has an unusual design. It has all the crafting stations. It has planters, common containers and bookshelves, and different music that is in the interiors. Now, just look at this place. I think the inside of this place looks amazing, and it's very different it's unlike any mod that I've ever seen and I'll just give you guys a little bit of an overview of what the outside and the inside look like so let's begin So as you can see, the house inside this cave and the cave itself is very beautiful looking and it'll definitely add to your playthroughs if you add it. And it's a nice free house that you can start off with or you can go there and add it whenever you want, add it to any of your characters and any of your playthroughs and it'll work just fine. So that's why it comes in at our number three spot, so I'd recommend giving it a try. Coming in at our number two spot, we have a mod called Elemental Archery. Now this mod adds eight elemental themed and summonable bows to the game. They each have unique textures to give them their elemental looks and each bow has a different damage type and effects. There's a fire bow, a shock bow, an ice bow, an explosive fire shock and ice bow, and then there is a sun and shadow bows as well, which all have their own different types of damage and own different types of, you know, combat. And to find these, the Fire Shock and Ice Bows that are normal, along with the Enhanced Mystic Binding Spell, can be found in Dragon's Reach at the Mage there. And then the Explosive versions of the bows can be found in Mistville Keep, the Mage there will sell them to you. And then at the Blue Palace, you'll be able to find the Sun and Shadow Bows. As you can see, I'm showing you where all of the bows are and how to collect them all. And showing off just how all these bows work, they're all extremely powerful and they will make your character feel like an absolute badass. So I would recommend downloading this and adding it to your playthrough because it'll definitely make for a more badass character and you'll be able to deal tons of damage to all your enemies. So that's why it comes in at our number two spot. So I'd definitely recommend giving this mod a try. 
Coming in at our number one spot, we have Mammoth Manor. Now this is located by Falkreath by the western side of the lake, right next to Half Moon Mill. Now some of the lore, it says here on the mod page, The previous owner of this manor, a famous adventurer and mammoth slayer, has recently met his fate and his new house is now up for grabs. The main building is a rather moderately sized but roomy enough for the dragonborn and a couple of his followers, spouse, and the kids. There's two beds for them. There's a main bedroom and a second bedroom either for the children of the followers, and you can change the option from the main desk in the main bedroom, and there's a third optional small bedroom for the two followers in the basement. There's everything you need for crafting and plenty of storage space, and in the basement there's also an optional small armory with some mannequins. Outdoors there is a small stable for a horse and a sauna by the lake, as well as a few planters to grow food and ingredients. Now I'm going to be giving you guys a tour of the house, so let's begin. So as you can see, there is a lot of content jammed into one little house, and you know how that's my favorite thing in a house mod, is how everything is just, you know, crammed together, there's no wasted space at all, there's lots of decor, and lots of interactive things that you can use inside the house. That is my favorite type of house mod, and that is why this mod comes in at our number one spot, so I would recommend downloading Mammoth Manor and adding it to your load order. So that's pretty much it for this week's episode of the Top 5 Skyrim Mods of the Week. Hopefully you guys did enjoy, and if you did, I would appreciate it if you left a like and subscribe if you're new. It helps me out a lot. And if you have any mods that you'd like me to cover in future Top 5 Mod episodes, be sure to let me know in the comment section below, or you can follow me on Twitter. I'll be sure to leave my Twitter in the description, and you guys can follow me on there and leave me suggestions through there as well. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys did enjoy, and I'll talk to you guys later.